Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about a spring bass fishing lure I never leave home without and that's going to be the soft plastic jerk bait or fluke or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, that is a bait that I've been fishing since I was a very young kid. Uh, probably one of the first baits that I ever started fishing around the time of like eight years old uh, and I've caught so many bass on this bait. It's probably one of the most effective bass fishing lures that are out there on the market. If you're just getting into fishing for the first time or you're just looking for some baits to catch you a lot more fish this year this is going to be one of them we're going to break down everything you need to know about it why it's so effective different ways of rigging it different color choices um, and basically just why this is a bait that you need to have in your tackle box especially with spring coming up it's one that i'll keep pre-spawn all the way through post-spawn I will have a tied on and fishing it every single time I go out. So stay tuned, let's get right into it. All right, so for starters, what makes this bait so effective? Why do you need to have it? Um, and, and what makes a soft plastic jerk bait so good and irresistible to bass? The biggest thing is that it just mimics dying bait fish so well. I've fished some very clear water fisheries and sight fished bass with this bait and I've literally thrown other baits at them. You could throw a wacky rig at them. You could throw all different kinds of like even finesse baits to them and they will not react to it whatsoever. But there's something about that darting action that they just cannot resist. I've laid one of these baits right out in front of two or three fish in very clear water and you twitch it one or two times and they just come unleashed on it. They will dart from far away. They'll chase this thing down from very far away. I've pulled them out from underneath docks, around wood, through grass, all kinds of stuff. It's crazy to see how active and just their mood will instantly change just by putting this bait in front of them. Um, it's just something I've grown to love to fish over the years. I've had some of my best days in the spring actually fishing with this bait. I had a couple days last year where like I went out and fished and they would not touch a single thing. And I would throw this bait on and start working it around docks and the fish would come out of nowhere that I didn't even know were there and come bite this bait just because they couldn't resist it. I also had one of my best days in the spring ever right around the spawn pre-spawn time. I caught almost 50 bass between me and my buddy using nothing but a fluke all single day. Uh, it's, it's just a great bait to fish. I love fishing them. Um, and as long as I'm still fishing, it'll be a bait that's in my tackle box, whether I'm fishing a creek. Ponds most especially, I've caught so many fish in ponds using this. Any lake that has some cleaner water where you can also like sight fish some of these fish with this bait, it's just an excellent bait and one you need to have. So it'll be something that I'm throwing for years to come. Uh, I'm excited to make some videos doing them this year as well. So first let's talk about some rod and reel setup here. And what you'll notice is I actually have a jerk bait tied on this rod. I literally use my jerk bait setup. So it's a soft plastic jerk bait. I'm gonna use the same setup. The only time I will ever change is if I'm gonna go slightly heavier on my line because I'm fishing around very heavy cover, I'll go to a seven foot medium heavy with 14 pound test fluorocarbon. But any other time I'm fishing the fluke, the lighter the line that you can get away with, the more bites and more action that you're gonna get. Uh, you just have to be careful and retie often because you can break off. But this is the Icon jerkbait and topwater rod that I like to fish this on. It's the same as my finesse swimbait rod. It's the same as my jerkbait rod. It's the same as my topwater rod. I've really liked using this rod a lot for a lot of different techniques. Uh, and this is the six foot nine extra fast medium action. So it'll work for exactly what you need to do. It has that tip to really snap that bait and make it dart. And that's really what makes those fish go crazy on this thing. So that is the setup that I like to use. I have a Shimano SLX DC on here. Don't need that if you don't need to. Uh, the biggest thing is the seven two to one gear ratio on here. Uh, something in the sevens to be able to pick up that slack quickly and make that bait work. There's days where I'll keep this thing working across the top of the water, like within six inches and like even blowing out of the water and fish will come get it. There's other days where you just wanna keep your slack up and twitch it nice and slow and keep it down in front of the fish's face. Uh, you'll just have to play around with that. And then I put straight 12 pound test fluorocarbon on here occasionally I'll go to 14 pound test, but that's about it. If you start putting 17 or 20 on here, unless you're fishing around the heaviest and nastiest cover, you're gonna lose action on your bait and you're gonna get less bites because that line has so much resistance. It's not gonna let the bait do what it needs to do. Um, I've noticed even fishing it on like a spinning rod with eight pound test for like a Zoom Junior fluke that I've done. I just did that down in Florida. That bait on that rod had so much more action 
than putting that bait on 15 or 17 pound test and fishing it around. I played around with some of the different actions to see what happens. Um, it's crazy how much just the line test will affect your bait's performance. Now, looking at rigging these guys up, there's a few different ways you can go about it and I've talked about numerous different ways of rigging it over the years. Uh, and I have a bunch of different videos on them. I'll link my favorite one at the end of today's video for when you're losing fish or getting some short strikes or stuff like that. Uh, because the biggest problem with fishing a fluke is the fish will come off a lot. You lose a lot of fish. Your hookup ratio, you'll get a ton of bites, but your hookup ratio isn't as high. Uh, and the biggest reason for that is just using a regular extra wide gap hook. If you're just starting, just fishing for the first time, or you're just out there on the water for the first time trying this fluke and trying to figure out what hook to use, I will start with this hook. I still use this hook. Um, sometimes they'll eat it good enough that you'll just land them on the extra wide gap, and that's the way that I prefer to rig it. Uh, but if I start losing fish on this, I usually use like a five or a six wide gap hook. If you start losing fish on this, the next method I will go to, to make sure I'm landing fish, is to an owner twist lock. I will make sure they're the unweighted ones. You can weight them if you want to. It'll give your fluke a different action. Uh, but I use the unweighted versions, five or six aught again. And the reason that just this hook change, it's still a wide gap hook, but the reason that hook change lands you more fish is because when you actually thread your bait onto this screw keeper here and Texas rig it, when a fish bites it, instead of when you set the hook, when you set the hook with a fluke, it'll ball up on the extra wide gap and push towards the point of the hook. So the, not, the point of the hook won't be as exposed to get a good hook set. When you have it on this hook here, it will collapse down rather than ball back because it's the head is being held up on the screw keeper up at the top here. So when you have that happen, it will condense down and you'll get more hook gap, more hook point to actually get a good hook set. So that's my first line of defense. If I'm losing fish, that's what I'm gonna go with first. If I'm still losing fish, you're gonna lose your fish ability of your bait a little bit, and you're going to lose some weedless ability of your bait here. But I will actually take a treble hook different sizes. This is a size four. I prefer a round bend because it'll give you more hook point, uh, but you can use an extra wide gap as well. Uh, you can put a split ring on here if you want to, or you can tie it direct to your line. And I've showed the video. I'll link this one at the end. Um, I punch a pop rivet through the front of the bait, and then you can either run this on the back of the bait or on the belly. You basically make your bait a through wire or through line bait. So you'll run your line through the rivet, you'll tie it to this hook. You can put this hook anywhere on the bait as like a stinger. And when they come up and bite it, you already have hook open and you can just set the hook. It'll, it, you will land nine out of 10 fish that bite this bait with this setup, but you also snag a lot more and your bait, because it has the weighted pop rivet in the front, will have less of a dart action. So you might lose a couple bites by going to that because it's going to fall nose first rather than that perfect shimmy and then dart aggressively because the weight is evenly distributed on a wide gap or that twist lock hook. So you really just have to play around with what the fish are doing. I'll change my rig throughout the day depending upon how aggressive they're eating it. I will always start with the wide gap and work my way up. Uh, but if you wanna see this video, it will be at the end of today showing you how to rig this bait up just with that fluke, um, the fluke with the, uh, the treble hook there, be at the end of today's video. The last thing to talk about is the bait itself. Um, I have fished a Zoom Super Fluke for years. I'm not gonna tell you they don't work. They work excellent, they're great baits. Um, I also have started fishing the Sixth Sense Flush. Um, this has been a great bait as well. I do work with Sixth Sense. If you're interested in getting any of the Sixth Sense tackle talked about in today's video, you can check out the links below. You can use my code Quince. You'll save 10% off your order. You'll be helping out me a ton to make videos like this uh, and continue making awesome videos for you guys. Uh, but that's it, it works the same as a fluke. It will do the same action. Um, and it has a little weed guard built in on the top fin there. Um, sometimes I can cut that out of the way if I'm getting too many fish biting and missing, um, or I'll try some different hook methods. Um, I have been experimenting with these for the past year or two since I started working with Sixth Sense. They do still catch fish. They work just like a fluke, 
or if you want to buy a Zoom Fluke, they work the same. Um, overall, it's just a soft plastic jerk bait. There's a ton of them on the market. There's like the caffeine shad. There's all kinds of stuff. Just find one that you really like, has a good shimmy to it as you put a good uh, a 5 aught hook in it, has a good shimmy and fall rate, and it has a good action and darts really well. Uh, that's the biggest thing with your Fluke. And then when it comes to colors, uh, I fish two different colors in around the year i'll fish a fluke all year round um i'll fish a lot of like shad patterns so like a shad pearl uh this is threadfin shad they have a bunch of different varieties of these but white or like a natural shad color that's going to be anytime post spawn once the shad spawn starts from there all the way through the fall summer included they're going to be chasing bait fish they're going to be looking for shad that's when I'm going to fish that. Even into the fall, it's a great bait to fish all that time of year. That's when I'm going to go with that. If you have shad in your lake and they like to chase bait fish, post spawn all the way through the fall, shad patterns are the way to go. However, we're talking about this in the spring sense or pond fishing or stuff like that. Or I'll even use these throughout the summer as well because bass will always eat a bluegill. Uh, I like to use some more natural bluegill colors in my fluke. Uh, it's, it, it seems weird because you're mimicking like a bait fish profile, but just the darting action in general is what draws them in. And they seem to like the bluegill colors more, whether they're feeding on perch, bluegill, whatever. I really find that they like those a lot, pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn post especially, and then even into the summer as well. Uh, watermelon red is probably like my number one color. If I had to have one, watermelon red would be it. Uh, this is a really good color as well. It's called sunfish juice. It's like a lighter belly with a darker back. Uh, has a little bit more pop in the color there. And then watermelon gill, or if you're fishing the fluke color, this would be baby bass. That has been like my number one color for as long as I've fished. Some of the first bass I ever caught in my entire life we're on a Zoom Super Fluke in the baby bass color. So I always have this color on me. I know it's not the baby bass colored Super Fluke, uh, but this one just brings back memories. And anytime I'm looking for a bite, that watermelon gill color would be the one that I have on. And I'm gonna dart that around and try and mimic those fish, um, chasing some bait fish down and getting bites that way. So excellent choices. Uh, you can pick from a, a variety of different colors, different baits, whatever works for you. But if you don't have a soft plastic jerk bait throughout spring, you're making a mistake. It's a great bait to catch a ton of fish all spring long. I've had some of my best days fishing and you can too if you get some of these baits. Get out there and twitch that bait around. We're going to have some videos coming in the very near future actually fishing out on the water and we're going to be doing some fluke and soft plastic jerk bait videos as well so stay tuned for that. In the meantime if you want to see how to treble hook rig one of these check this video out right here. Hit the subscribe button down below and thanks for watching.